So this is Management Decision Tools. We are talking about linear programming applications and we are looking at our first example. Right? And we'll go slow first because this is our uh, first serious step-by-step uh, -step manner of translating a business situation that we will present as, as a slide, as a description text. Of course, in real life, we will have to walk the ground to appreciate the scenario. But here, given the limitations of uh, you know, academic learning environment, we will just uh, present to you the, the business situation through a slide of text. Okay, So here we have a marketing application. We'll go slow at first. And along the way, I will uh, I open source my mind to you. In, in, in other words, I will make an initial uh, guess or initial version of my appreciation of the problem, translate it to the model, and it may not be the right version uh, in the first case. All right? So I may uh, make some incorrect uh, version of the model along the way, and I will show you uh, how I discover myself that the first version is not right, and I correct it so as to get the right version. And in doing so, I want to show you that it is not uh, something that I have and uh, it takes years for you to acquire. It is something that you can uh, learn to uh, pick up right, the skills to write down an LP model that is consistent with the description uh, in the text. So if the business text has certain constraints, have certain concerns, you should express them in the model. And I'll show you by way of making mistakes to uh, how to correct your own uh, initial incorrect appreciation of the of the situation all right so we'll see how that goes now we have a task here to conduct marketing research in, a, in other words to collect survey outcomes about a product okay so that's very common uh, but of course we always have um, two big sets of constraints right we have uh, resource limitations. Whenever you hear about resource limitations, uh, you will use less than equal to. Okay, so example, what are some examples of resource limitations? Uh, budget, right? Uh, should not exceed. Uh, labor hours. Okay, so um, resources in general. And resources can be hours, can be can be a uh, uh, man count, all right? Uh, number of workers, resources in general, right? So whatever is taken as resource. And in general, if there are performance uh, requirements, that would always translate into greater or equal to. So what are some examples of performance requirements? Uh, must have, right? Must have. Uh, example, must produce certain outputs. Okay. Uh, must achieve certain uh, results. Make sure on a weekly basis we achieve $10,000 of profits, right? Uh, must do something, must attain uh, certain expectations. Okay, so example, your GPA must be at least 2.0 to stay in the university, example, right? So these are the constraints. And before you take up a course, you assess, will this course give me a C or a D that pulls down my GPA and so it becomes a risky course for me, right? But if this course is kind of easy to get A+, plus, yeah, I think I will be able to satisfy the university's constraint easily so I will tend to want to do it on a greater basis or take up the course so these are uh, constraints that will change your behavior your your choice and therefore your decision so these two groups two big groups of constraints are always there they are always there in almost all situations all LP models so definitely keep track of them all the time and because of that I will not go through too much of those two big big categories of uh, constraints okay so in this example we want to know how 
to define decision variables. That's one big hurdle for most beginning learners in LP. Uh, what are the decision variables? How do I identify them? Anytime you have the business owner, that is the, the question, asking how many, I'll write it first. I wonder how many, right? I wonder how much certain quantities have to be. For example, I wonder how much flour I should pour in, you know, so that the fragrance is maximized. <sighs> Sounds like a decision variable. Sounds like a decision variable. Anytime you have this quantitative kind of question marks, okay, so in general, question marks, not why, not not why, question marks for, for how much and how many, right? Then that implies that you use, you define uh, one decision variable for each such question mark. Each such quantity. All right. So so this is a general guide in terms of saying, hmm, you know, when when a, when a problem presents itself as, hmm, I wonder how many workers I should deploy so that the work can be done uh, quickly. Now, of course, deploy as many as possible, right? But I only have ten, of which only two. Uh, available in the morning, another one available in the afternoon. Yeah, so you start to see that. Well, uh, it's not so easy to to come up with a with an answer, uh, even for such a situation. But that exactly means that each, I wonder how many each of the I wonder how much deserves a slot, a decision variable uh, uh, container, right? For Excel solver ultimately to deposit a number there and thereby advising us, advising the business owner how much and how many so as to obtain the best results. Okay, so that's again a general guide, how much, how many. So let's apply them and uh, try to come up with a with an LP model to describe fully this marketing survey project. So everything is quite straightforward. It says we require all these constraints to be fulfilled. What are they? We need 1,000 door-to-door personal interviews. Fine, if that is the only constraint, give me the money and I will implement and uh, hire enough people to knock on you know, doors to get you 1,000 outcomes. Because there's no room to, to negotiate, there's no room to optimize. 1,000 means 1,000, right? You cannot say, mm, let me try 900 because that doesn't satisfy the constraint. So that cannot be it. But I do imagine as I read, right, uh, it will be the case of uh, something like saying that I will have a, have a, have a decision, have a constraint that on the right hand side it is 1000 so kind of like number of interviews right? so the con this constraint will have to be in except i don't know yet how to describe number of interviews that could be one variable n right let n be the number of interviews subject to the constraints that n equals to a thousand finish but of course it's not very interesting right because you can solve it right away but let's move on and see at least 400 households with children oh wait okay at first i only have one decision variable n right and i constrained n to be 1000 so n cannot be 999 cannot be 1000 fine but now i have no way to describe households that is children uh, interviews with children households with children i cannot describe that if i only have one decision variable because that decision variable is always having the value 1000 so i wouldn't be able to say something like at least 400 households that is interviews must be done with children households with children so well instead of one decision variable i now have to split let me move it on the left hand side i now have to have two decision variables right so i need to say that uh instead of saying n right equal to number of interviews I cannot do that because it's not enough uh, bandwidth to for me to 
describe two numbers households with children households without children so i have to write it as no children uh interviews done on households without uh with no children and uh children right so households with children okay so now i have two variables and i know that they must add up to one thousand so now i need to change this into nc plus c see that so not i haven't invalidated any of the previous constraints but now i have more bandwidth to entertain these constraints and i can say that with children right households with children has to be at least 400 and the second one households without children also has to be at least 400 leaving the room for c to be 400 to maybe 600 and nc could also be 400 to 600 so there's a rubber band range now and in this in this in this space uh we'll have to optimize it right by minimizing the cost so so far so good i'm i'm up to the third constraint total number of evening interviews must be at least as great as the number of daytime interviews okay so as you see now uh, we went from one total to children without children and now we have this additional rather uh, orthogonal kind of uh, description called daytime and evening time right so so it is about two kinds of time slots and both households with children and without children can be done in the daytime can be done in the evening time giving us a two by two matrix right 